Hey, so uh, someone asked me how I made um, the uh, the controls um, like follow the face, basically. Um, so uh, the way you want to do that without causing any cycles, because uh, you could get into like dependency cycles because the f control drives the the face the shapes of the mesh and then the mesh would dr then drive the the position of the of the control so in order to avoid that blender has a like cool setting that you can use which is on the bones uh, viewport display uh, if you have a custom object set up here which you need to uh, so by default your bone will look like that and you set it to use a custom object uh, which in my case is named facial control shape um, which is just basically just an icosphere um, so I have that and then you get this option that uh, pops up but for that you need a second bone uh, what basically what that option does is instead of displaying that custom object at the bones location it displays it at another bones location so if I duplicate that bone, I'll move it right here for now. Um, I'm using the bone layer management add-on, uh, bone layers add-on. Uh, very useful add-on. If you don't have it, I highly recommend it. I'll link it in the description. Um, and I'll uh, add that bone to the attach uh, layer for now. Well, yeah, I'll rename it to attach and this bone will be attached to the face uh, just a bit later and that bone will then I'll just remove that so it looks like this so this bone will be um, displayed at that bone's location but will stay in that location so the way you do that again is using the shape custom shape transform set it to attach to the like the name of the bone you want to attach it to so now that bone, uh, if I show its position using the Blender's gizmos, it's still here, but it displays here. And if I move that bone, uh, let me remove that, sorry. If I move that bone, you'll see that when I select this one, it's still in place here. So that's good, that's what you want. but you don't want that bone to be here. You want that bone to be attached to the face actually. So the way you do that um, is by creating a vertex group that um, has only one vertex in it. So I'll, I'll just created the vertex group, assign this vertex right here. Um, that's the vertex where my bone is uh, snap to like my controller bone um, so I have that I hit sign just to be sure I'll deselect everything and hit select and when I zoom in on it it's just that vertex so that's good uh, then you go back to the armature uh, select the bone you want to attach to the face not the control the bone and you can uh, create a copy location constraint uh, target the face or whatever mesh you want to, to target. Not sure why it doesn't work. Okay. Um. I'll just, yeah, add it manually. I thought I could. Okay, never mind. Uh, and I'll target the the vertex group that's named group here, because if I don't, the the bone is actually like snapped to the center because the pivot point of the um, the face is in the center of the world. So I want to target the vertex group, and now this bone is attached to the particle of like the the vertex that I selected earlier. So now if I move the control, you'll see that this bone moves and since this bone uh, gets displayed at that location at this bone's location it 
like follows and uh, we have to, so the basic setup works now we have two issues the first one being I can move my controller way out to, so the controller actually is there uh, if I uh, remove that you'll see that it actually is there yeah um, but it only displays on the face and that creates a big like disconnection between um, the bone position and the place it's actually in the world uh, and that's very uncomfortable for the animator to work with because um, like they will want to to set that uh, to one or like activate the shape they don't really care about the actual value so they'll activate the shape just by dragging that out thinking it just maxed out but now they might want to tail it back a bit and so they grab it try to move it back but yeah it doesn't work um, that's because it's it was way out of range first so they need to grab it put it back a lot and only then it starts moving so you don't want that you really want to on the controllers have a limit location that um, that limits the the like the translation of the bone um, I just activated everything I know that I want to limit it by one centimeter on the uh, X and Y because I only have like shapes that are triggered uh, in that direction and that direction if I had like a negative Y value I would want negative one here but I don't so okay um, you need to set that to use uh, local space here and um, you want to check the for transform thing because even though it might uh, limit the actual position of the bone so now I'm moving it out and you can see that the gizmo stays here but the actual value goes like way out and that's not good because well yeah you want that to be locked to one like you said here and just to have that working you just need to check that for transform checkbox so now if I move it out I can try and move it out way out it doesn't go past one and it doesn't go below zero so that's good we have a second issue with that now uh, I don't really need the uh, gizmo anymore uh, if I'll uh, move the first of all I'll hide the attach layer because I don't really want to see that anymore uh, I'll move the control by hitting G X and as you can see it kind of follows like moves at the same speed of the mouse which is good it's what you'd want uh, depending on the like the angle it obviously won't do the same but yeah however if I move it up it goes a lot faster and that technically doesn't really matter because uh, what the animator wants is to have like consistent values uh, so if I activate the shape fully it means well I have like a, a one value here in my location here and if I activate that one fully I have a one here so both of them set fully are uh, one if I set that to 0.5 the shape is activated halfway and so on so you want to maintain that so you don't you absolutely do not want to change that that's very important because then in the graph editor uh, like curves wouldn't have the the same height even though they would describe the same uh, thing behind the scene so yeah very important to have that from 0 to 1 or 0 to 10 or 0 to 100 whatever as long as it's consistent it's it's fine uh, so the way you fix uh, that difference in speed in the viewport is that you uh, duplicate that bone I'll add it to the sensitivity layer, rename it as sensitivity. And what I want to do now is select the um, control, then uh, 
I'll do it from the outline here. The control, then the sensitivity. And I want to print those uh, not connected, but with keep offset. So that's good. And then you want to, if you go into pose mode, I'll uh, select the sensitivity. Um, why? Oh yeah, no, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so that sensitivity uh, one stays in place. It doesn't need to move at all. But um, now you can scale that bone to change how much the its child bone moves in the world while keeping the same uh, transform values. So the bigger the bone, the more the bigger the parent, the more the child will have to move in world space to go to to that position. So, um, like I said, uh, the side location is probably fine, even though it seems to move a lot faster than the mouse. But the a position, uh, like translation or location, is not good at all. So. Uh, I'll scale that bone on its y-axis by, let's say, 4, just to have a, a good example of that. So now uh, I have my mouse just on the, on the control, move it on the y, and as you can see, it now follows the mouse. Uh, that actually looks pretty good. Um, and I might want to do that on the x-axis as well, because um, it seems to move like a lot faster as well. Uh, not as fast though, so I'll scale that on the x by, let's say, 2. And that seems about right. And as you can see, uh, if I go back to the item, hide that bone, uh, no, actually I'll keep it visible. Um, if I go up, it still gets locked to 1. I haven't changed that, only the scale of this. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much how you want to, to set that up. Uh, it's a lot of work, it can be like a bit repetitive to do, because you want to do that on every control on the face, and you can end up having, yeah, 20 controls on the face maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, that can get repetitive. If you know how to code, you can code that. In Python, it's fairly easy. It's just like a few lines of code to, to like create the control with its parent and its attached control as well. Uh, but that's the gist of it. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully that helps some of you and if you have any more question or whatever, feel free to ask. I'll try to answer that. Yeah. Uh, thanks for watching.